Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Is there something wrong, Chester? Oh, there's going to be a fight up there by the stage office. You better come, Mr. Dillon. All right, what's the trouble? They're around back of the stage. You can't see them from here. Oh, who is it? There are a couple passengers. One's a great big man with red hair, about the biggest man i ever seen. Who's the other one? Well, I don't know, but he's kind of old and real thin and poor looking, like he'd been rowed half to death. Oh, that red-headed fellow will ruin him, Mr. Dillon. The size of a man doesn't matter much to a six-gun, Chester. But they ain't armed. Neither one of them's carrying no gun. Yeah, then they won't get into much trouble. Oh, wait till you see him. That big one. He's got hands like shovels, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I can see him now. Oh, look how he's slapping that poor little fellow. If he really hit him, he'd kill him. Oh, stand there. Get your hands up. How can I beat a man who won't fight him? All right, move back, everybody. Let me prove it. All right, hold it, mister. That's enough. What are you saying that's enough? He ain't by far enough. This man isn't even fighting you. I'm trying to make him fight, ain't I? Why should he fight? Because we come in on that stagecoach together. And he sat there the whole eight hours and stared at the floor. He never said a word. Like it drove me crazy. I think it did drive you crazy. He isn't going to hurt you anymore, mister. But you better get out of here. I don't care what he does. You fight him, mister. You break him up a little. I'll watch. Nobody's going to touch him. Were you scared of this old crow? I said to leave him alone. You said? You're talking to Sam Keeler, mister. I'm a bear cat. People do what I say. You're talking to a United States Marshal. A Marshal? Well, now. How come you're not wearing a gun, Keeler? Man's got to wear a gun. Most men do. My hands do my fighting. And you're big enough to whip most any man alive, aren't you? I sure am. But you go unarmed so nobody can use his gun against you. He'd be held up for murder if he did, wouldn't he? Well, you figured yourself a nice big advantage, Keeler. But you're a coward. What? You're a coward! And I'd still be a fool to go up against you barehanded. You don't dare use that gun. You said so yourself. There are lots of ways to use a gun, Keeler. Marshal, I'm going to knock your head into a peak. And then I'm going to knock the peak off. Right now. Oh, he dropped like a pole axe, dear. You killed a man because of me. I haven't killed him. But he's going to be kind of touchy when he comes to, and you better get out of sight. Men are always fighting, hating each other. Who are you, mister? 
My name is Seth Tandy, Marshal. Well, Tandy, if you don't like men fighting, Dodge is no town for you. Chester. Yes, sir? Throw some water on Keeler, and if he wants more fight, tell him I'll be in my office. Okay, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots, no hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Keeler come too, all right, Mr. Dillon. You didn't hurt him so very bad. Well, I haven't been worrying about it, Chelsea. No, sir. But it's been two hours. It's after dark. He couldn't have been unconscious all this time. No, sir, he wasn't. Uh, see, I stopped off to the town soil. I got me my winter haircut. No. Oh, you should have seen Keeler when he come to. My goodness, he is mad. It wasn't getting buffaloed so much as everybody laughing at him. Seemed like he just can't stand that. He looked like he was about to go wild. Well, there'll be more trouble from him. Yes, sir. It's like this friend of his that showed up after the fight, a fellow called Humbert. He just couldn't believe it when he seen Keeler laying there. This Humbert, he said somebody would get killed for it, sure. Uh-huh. Uh, Chester, I'm going to go down to the Long Branch and have a drink. Oh, well, I'll walk part way with you. Okay. What happened to that Seth Tandy? I don't know. He left. But there's something wrong with him, Mr. Dillon. Did you notice the funny look on him? Well, he's got eyes like a blind horse. What kind of man is he? All I know is he's the kind that lets himself get knocked around and doesn't seem to care one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, you want a drink? Uh, no, sir, I thank you. I got business. Uh, but you tell Miss Kitty hello, huh? Yeah, sure. Evening, Matt. Uh, Kitty. Uh, is this glass yours? Oh, one of the girls brought it over, but she's busy now. That beer pitcher's hers, too. Yeah. Well, I'll leave some money with you and you can give it to her. Huh? All right. They say the Santa Fe's going to start laying track of west of here soon. Yeah. More railroad, more people, more trouble. Uh, I'm sorry, Kitty. I'm in a poor mood. Uh, hang up your gun, Matt. Yeah? I'd do what? I'm too lazy to work for a living. Uh, I suppose keeping the peace around here isn't work. And then there's getting shot. Uh, it's been a long time since anybody put a bullet in me, Kitty. Just because you're learning to duck. <laughs> you know, up in Canada, they got a bird called a loon. And they claim that these loons really can duck a bullet. Why don't you go up there and study them a while? See how they do it. Yeah, might be a good idea. Yeah. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. What's the trouble, Chester? That fellow Tandy, Seth Tandy. What about him? Well, some fellows seen him stumble out of an alley just now. They took him up to Doc's. What? He was all beat up. Oh, somebody had really worked on him. Who? Well, I don't know. Nobody's seen it happen. All right, let's get up to Doc's, Chester. We'll see you later, Kitty. Sure, man. Come in. Oh, hello, Matt. 
Chester. Well, now, how's Tandy, Doc? Well, there's nothing broken that I can find, but he's sure colored up. He's sitting in the back room there, if you want to see him. Mm-hmm. How'd he say who did it? Oh, he hasn't said a word about anything so far. Maybe you can get him to talk. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's stand back, Chester. Well, okay, Doc. Well, how do you feel, Tandy? Uh, Tandy, I want to know who did this. I'm sure it was Sam Keeler, but I want to hear it from you. No, Marshal. There's been enough violence. The next time he might kill you, Tandy. It doesn't matter. What? It's not important. Not no more. What's your trouble, Tandy? Maybe I can help you. Nobody can help me, Marshal. When a man loses faith in his God, he loses everything. I've lost my faith. I no longer believe. I, uh... You're a preacher? I was a preacher. Thirty years. Now, what'd you come to Dodge for? Oh, no reason except get away from people that knew me before. I didn't want them to see me. Maybe start them doubting, too. I've got nothing left, Marshal. It doesn't matter what happens to me now. Uh, uh, Doc. I heard him. Well, tell him something. I don't know what to tell him. He's a preacher who doesn't believe in God anymore. Oh, man, I'm an ignorant frontier doctor. Sure, I can dig bullets out of people. I can sew them up, too. I can shove their bones back into place. But nobody ever taught me how to patch up a preacher who's lost his religion. Don't trouble yourselves about me, gentlemen. I'll be moving on. No. Not tonight, you won't. Now, you can do what you want tomorrow, but tonight either you or Sam Keeler's going to sleep in jail. Jail. I'm not going to let Keeler catch you again tonight. And if you won't say it was him, I can't arrest him. Oh. Well, did he do it? Marshal, I'll sleep in your jail. Maybe Seth Tandy didn't care what happened to himself. But he sure went out of his way to keep other people from having any trouble. If I'd have put Sam Keeler in jail that night, that'd have been quite a battle. And Tandy knew it. So we took him downstairs. And after we found him something to eat, we gave him a blanket and locked him in a cell where he'd be safe. Chester slept in the office with a shotgun by his bed. And after looking the town over for a couple of hours, I went to my room. It was just after daylight when I was awakened. What? Wake up, Mr. Dillon. What? What you doing? Mr. Oh, Dillon. Chester, stop the racket and come on in. The door's unlocked. Oh. What time is it, Chester? What are you doing here? It's Seth Tandy. He's gone, Mr. Dillon. What? Yes, sir, I went out to get us some breakfast, and he didn't feel like going, so I unlocked his cell and left him sitting there in the office, and when I got back, he was gone. Here, I found this note stuck on the door. Marshal, if you want to see Seth Tandy alive, come to Turkey Bend at noon, alone and unarmed. It ain't signed. No, it doesn't have to be. Sam Keeler, hmm? Yeah. What are you going to do? Do what it says, I guess. But you can't go up there alone, not wearing no gun, Mr. Dillon. He'll kill you. That Sam Keeler could kill anybody. And if I doubt what'll happen to Tandy? He don't care what happens to him. He said so himself. You'd be risking your life for a man who don't even care about living. Chester, go to the stable and get my horse while I'm dressing, will you? Then you're going to do it? And take the rifle boot off my saddle. I won't be needing it this time. Smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. 
It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots, no hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Maybe Chester was right. Maybe it didn't make sense. But still, I had to do it. It was about 20 miles upriver to Turkey Bend, and I got there about noon. I waited around for a while, and then Keeler's friend Humbert rode up. He was unarmed, too, 